If you die Larry in day, also known as Daddy Freeze and I, started talking second or third week of February, second or third week, I think, of February this year. And um, we talk, we discuss scriptures. That's, that's, that's all we discuss. There's nothing else we do outside talking about scriptures. Certain things that we see as encounters, we talk about scriptures. He talks about scriptures. I listen. I talk about scriptures and he listens. And um, that's been on for like over two months or so. You see, in First John chapter 4, if you read verse 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another. He that loveth knoweth God. Verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God. If you read verse 12, he says, If we love, it shows that God dwelleth in us. Now, if you read verse 20 of First John chapter 4, if you read verse 20, the Bible says, that if you claim to love God who you've not seen and hate your brother who you've seen, the Bible says you are a liar. If you're a scholar, you're a Bible scholar, you understand that different translations use different words. But that word liar, NLT uses the word a liar. ROSV uses the word a liar. The Message Bible uses the word a liar. The American Standard Version uses the word a liar. All translations use that word. You know why? Because the word lie there does not mean speaking verbally was untrue, but it means self-deceit. If you say you love God and you don't love your brother, you deceive yourself. Love is a powerful tool. It's a very powerful tool. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. It only takes a spiritual person to love. I understand why some people can love. Yes, he said a lot of things against me, so I heard. You know, so we see such uprising. But I see a person who discusses scriptures with me. There has never been any time other than scriptures. And I don't have his, I've never seen him. I don't have his account details. So this talk of maybe money was given, nothing of such happened. Why will I be accused? I've been hearing so many things since yesterday. Oh, Apostle, you are discussing with an antichrist. Apostle, oh, you have deviated. You are talking with somebody who is against the body of Christ. I have my reservations in this presentation. We don't agree on many things. Tomorrow, I can stand in front of a camera and speak against some things it stands for. And yet, we're still talking. Maturity is the ability for brethren to disagree on doctrines and still be brothers. So you don't condemn me. The fact I refuse to condemn a man that you all have condemned doesn't make me an enemy of God. That's not what the Bible teaches me. The Bible is my standard. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1 said, let brotherly love continue. Why does it sound like the heavens want to fall? That two brothers are now talking. And the heavens want to fall. So you love the hate. You love the anger. <laughs> you cannot achieve a divine goal using the energy of the flesh it has to be by the spirit it has to be by the spirit you cannot achieve a divine goal using the energy of the flesh in zechariah chapter 4 an angel asked zechariah he said what do you see he said i see candlesticks those days then is the duty of the priest to pour the oil on the candlestick so that the light will burn continually when the light is going out the priest goes pours the oil so the light comes up again in the temple but Zechariah suddenly noticed that there was a light in the candlestick and there was no priest. So he said, what are these? What is this? And the angel of the Lord said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit. Meaning that the end time true church is not going to be mechanical or technical. It's not going to be a human being pouring the oil. It's going to be by the spirit. So if you do not have the spirit, you cannot understand the workings of God. John 3 verse 8 says, the wind blow it where it listed. You can't tell where it's going or where it's coming from. So is every man born of the spirit. Men of the spirit are like the wind. You can't predict them. You can't. When you think you know them, you see them come out another way. You think, oh, they, they come out. You're like, well, who is this person? Why are you changing? It is a man of the spirit because he moves as he's led by the spirit. Everyone that's led by the spirit is unpredictable. So do I talk? Do, do we discuss myself and um, that the freeze? Yes, we talk. Do we discuss scripture? Yes. So we have to be careful. That's my standard. So you are not just reckless in statements. You make utterances. You don't season your word. You don't think of the things you say. When Jesus spoke in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 22, the Bible said they called his words gracious words. In Proverbs 25, I think verse 11, he says, as apple of gold in a picture of silver, so is a word fitly spoken. 
we've got to check the kind of things we say with our mouth. It's important. In Matthew chapter 12, if you read verse 36, the Bible says that every idle word that men speak, they will give account. Verse 37 says, By thy word thou art condemned, and by thy words thou art justified. If you read your Bible very well, read Proverbs 6 verse 2. It said, Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. So let your word, according to Titus, let your word be seasoned with salt and loaded with grace. Love is the key. We don't have a kind of relationship where tomorrow he does something wrong, I can rebuke him or he can't say, Apostle, you are wrong. No, we, we, we don't have that kind of relationship. We discuss scriptures. We discuss the word of God. And that is what Christianity should be. Even those who are against establishment are gradually forming denominations. Reformers are gradually forming denominations. That's how denominations started. They're giving a, a, a recommendation that is worse than the disease. They're giving a treatment. They're trying to recommend a treatment that is worse than the disease. So I will not subscribe to you hating people all because they spoke against you. Capacity is ability to get revelations and yet mix it with love. The kind of love that goes with revelation is called agios graphe. Agios graphe, agios comes from agape. Revelation that is bounded in love. The full understanding is not chronos, it's not kairos, it's agios graphe. So we've got to understand that kind of love. The love that is embedded in the word of God. The full love. You can't know everything. First Corinthians 13 verse 9, it says, We know in part, we prophesy in part. The revelation that God has given to you now is in part. And the truth is, whenever you progress into another part, there will be reactions. Let love lead. Grow up. You've got to grow up.